Hey Blender Artists, welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're diving into 3D modeling to create something awesome, a flexible reading lamp. We'll be using powerful tools to bring our vision to life. Let's make something together. Let's begin. So, delete your cube by pressing the X key and pressing delete and we're just going to add in a mesh and the mesh we're going to add in is the closest thing we've got to the actual base of our lamp which of course is the cylinder. Right, we can press the N key and fetch this up. Um, this is a good way of actually point to of actually adjusting the scale of something. You can also do it by pressing Ctrl and uh, pressing S and Z which will actually change its uh, width. As you can see, this is more exacting, so I'm just going to change this to 0.2. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, add a bevel to this. So press the tab key to go into edit mode. Select this top face. Right, this won't work correctly if we actually apply a bevel now, because let's just apply a bevel and I'll just show you. As you can see, the bevel doesn't seem to work, and the reason it doesn't work is that we haven't applied the scale. So you press Ctrl and A, while you're not, uh, make sure that you're actually not in edit mode. Press Ctrl and A, and we're going to actually apply rotation and scale. So we've got the actual base of our lamp, but it's not got a rounded edge. So let's quickly add a rounded edge. You've got point select, line select, and face select. So select the actual face. So press Ctrl and B, and because we've actually applied our rotation and scale, we can now make it look the way we want to do. Now eight's a bit too many. One's a bit too few, so let's just put it up to maybe five. Just to actually get that kind of base look. Right, I'm just going to select the top face again. E to extrude, S to scale. And what I'm going to do is actually merge these at center. So let's just right click. As you can see, the actual merge button isn't there. And that's because we're not on point select. Right click again and merge vertices at the center. Just like that. So quickly and easily we've made our base. I'm just going to give a bit of shape to this at the bottom. I just add in E and S to scale this down. E and S to scale it down. And I'm just going to actually select this by actually pressing the Alt key and selecting this ring here. Just between the lines we'll select the ring. And I'm just going to scale it up just to there. Just to select the ring. And I'm just going to extrude these along their normals. Like that. So I made myself a little base for my uh, my lamp. And we'll just leave it there for this for the time being. Press the one key to look from the front. And what we're going to do is actually go into edit mode by pressing the tab key. And we're going to select the center point here. Which is going to become the part of our lamp. So press the one key. I'm just going to extrude E. I'm just doing it randomly to there just so I make a sort of a lampshade and that's going to be the first leg of the arm and this is going to be that and this is going to be turned into a curve so let me move that back slightly because I, I just don't like the angle so we've got that and as you can see with your point still selected control and plus and what we're just going to do is pressing control plus 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 until it goes too far and then we take it back one and then we're going to actually separate these lines away from it. So press the P key just to separate the selection. What this do has now done is if we go back out of edit mode by pressing the tab key, is it's made these into two different shapes. So we're just going to quickly add a subdivision. There's two ways you can do that. You can add the spanner or wrench and add the modifier, generate, and then subdivide surface like that and you can set this all the way up to three that's one way of doing it but we're not going to use that way because there's a quicker way so press ctrl and three and of course then it adds the actual subdivision modifier in automatically that's the two ways you can actually apply it and it's quite simple to do right next let's just add in now we'll convert this now into a curve and we're going to use this to make our flexible cord of our lamp so let's just uh, do that quickly. So object. And we're going to convert it to a curve. Right. Because we haven't applied our modifier. It's just actually reverted it back to the straight line. So control Z just to undo that. What you've got to do is apply the actual subdivision modifier before you do that. 
So apply, object, and convert to curve. Right, because we've now converted this to a curve, what we can do, we've got this little sideways on smiley face down here, and we can actually just select that, go down to this, and what you've got is you've got bevel, but you've got bevel with depth. So let's just increase this, and quickly and easily, we're actually making ourselves a tube. Right, I'm just going to right click to uh, shade smooth this just so, just to show you but that doesn't much look like the flexible cord on our thumbnail so what we're going to do is do a little bit of work on this and then apply it let's just change this back from a curve object and back into a mesh so convert this is found under object and we convert this back to a mesh so we've got our mesh part and next what we'll do is we'll uh, Go into edit mode by pressing the tab key and we'll select the ring. Right, you can select these rings by pressing the alt key, selecting the line select and you can select them individually like this by holding the shift key and it, it takes a bit of doing and it's quite hard work. But there's a much easier way to do it. So select this ring and then go on selection, select loops and then select edge rings and as you can see it's now selected all of them all on its own without any work from yourself so now we just add a bevel to these lines Control and b increase that slightly just like that and then go on to face select so now we're on face select we can actually extrude these along their normals if you take them out this might be the effect you're wanting but i want to do it inside just to actually get that kind of shape just like that Press the tab key and we've got our flexible rings. Now as you can see we've got a lot of geometry between these and I don't think I want that so I'm just going to press Ctrl Z, Z, Z just to undo it and Ctrl B. The reason it's done this is because it's left the bevel segments from the last time and this time we only want one bevel segment just to actually get that rounded effect. So extrude along the normals and just take it in slightly just like that. And if we actually shade smooth this, you can see the actual effect that we achieve. So we're nearly there already. Next, what we want to do is actually press the tab key, go into edit mode, go on uh, line select, and we're going to select this edge ring. Now, there's a good reason to do this because what we're going to do is use the actual face shape or the first face direction to actually make our lamp itself. So go on to actual face select select the face and extrude along the normals as you can see it makes this kind of shape what we can do is actually scale this up so in fact now let's just press the s key and just scale this up so we've got our lamp shape uh, it depends what kind of shape or lamp you want but i think i want something that's uh, just a bit more rounded just like that and as you can see it's a little bit square in fact, to actually reduce our geometry, what I'll do is actually select the front face of here and we'll separate this into another object. This is done quite easily by pressing Ctrl plus plus plus. And I'm going to take it to there, press the P key and separate the selection. So what we've done now is actually separated these objects from each other. Add in the modifier, so Ctrl and 2, just to round it off like that. But as you can see, it's put a weird distortion on there, so what I'm going to do before I do that, press Ctrl and Z to undo. Before we do that, just press the X key and delete this ed uh, delete this face. So I'm going to put only faces, and it's deleted. Then back out of edit mode, add the subdivision modifier of two, Ctrl and two, and we've made our lamp. And of course, apply your modifier. So we've made our lamp quite simply now. And all we've got to do is add a bit of thickness to this, which is add modifier and solidify. So you couldn't see that very well. And we just increase this just to the th required thickness you want and then apply the modifier. What this does now is gives this an outer edge and an inner edge. So if I actually select the outer edge here, which is outer ring, by pressing the Alt key down, as you can see, it's not actually selected the inner. And we're going to use this to good effect because we're just going to 
select this ring in here Let's zoom in a little bit this ring in here hold the alt key down with line select selected just to select that and I'm just going to add a face to that by pressing the F key which means face so there we've got it we've actually made our lamp and all we've got to do now is make the cord that comes out the back of it quite simply I'm just going to use the same effect select a point select the base select a point and we'll make the little cord so just e e e e, e. Oh, it's up to you how wiggly you want your actual uh, cord to be but what i'm going to do now is grow my selection by control plus 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 oops try that again select the point control plus 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 until it grows too big and then actually reduce it by one press the p key and separate by selection just like we did before add a subdivision modifier in by control and three oops sorry that didn't work the reason it didn't work is because we're not in edit mode, uh, in object mode. So control and three, just to actually make it that kind of shape, change it back into object, convert to a curve, just like we did with the actual lamp, add a modifier, oops, convert to curve, hit your smiley face, go down to here, go to the depth, increase this, and as before, because we've actually not applied the actual modifier it's ignored it again but we'll add it after the fact this time we do that object convert back to a mesh and i'm just going to add the subdivision modifier by, by pressing ctrl and 2 to actually get it that kind of shape and then of course apply all modifiers by hitting the spanner or wrench and apply so we've got our general lamp and our base i'm just going to select a control and so add the subdivision modifier just to round it off that little bit more shade smooth and we've got our lamp so next just add the button which of course is a simple cylinder and we'll shape it out here while we were thing and then reduce it later on so select the top face add a bevel control b just like that in so many segments and all we've got to do now is actually just position this button and later on we'll actually show you how we color this in so i'm just going to scale this scale in the Z, just actually shrink it down to about there. And I'm just going to add a little chamfer, E and S, like that. And we've made our simple button. So it's just a case of shrink this down, move it up, G and Z, move it forward, G and Y. Oops, sorry, G and X in this case. And that's more or less it, G and Z. And in the next part of the tutorial, what we'll do is we'll actually colour this in. So I'm just going to actually select these two, join them together by right clicking and pressing join. And then just move this up down in the G and the Z. So actually move it into our pad. So as you can see, we've quickly and easily made a lamp. And if you stay with me on this tutorial, the next part will be actually adding the colours to this. So as you can see, we've now finished our model. And what we need to do is now colour this in. So what we'll do is actually use one of Blender's own HDRIs to do this. So we're going to actually just, I'm just going to show you where they're found. So if you go in new and then go in color, and what we're going to do is add an environmental texture into our world. So environmental texture, and we're going to open one. And this may be found on your C drive, but what we're actually looking is for this pathway. Mine's on my G drive under program files. Uh, I'm using uh, oops, under program files, under Blender Foundation. I'm using Blender 4.1 for this tutorial, I believe. So into 4.1 again, and we're looking for a thing called the data file, and then another one called Studio Lights. Once you've found the Studio Lights, go into the World tab, and then it, it gives the ones that are actually used in Blender by default. I think the Forest EXR is the default one when you're looking in your viewport. As you can see, now we've got actually shadows in our scene but the lighting is better but i'll just show you adding the actual different materials and so we've got our lamp there and we've got no colors attached to this now i've made predefined colors but what you can do is just add in different colors to different parts of this model as you so wish so what we've got is we've got the uh, the lamp so we're going to add in a the color what you do is actually go on new and you set the colors in these parameters. Now I've got predefined ones here and you can copy them if you wish. Now this is just a shiny black. As you can see, the base color is like a gray. 
the metallics 0 0.19 and the roughness is 0 0.053 if you want to copy my material exactly but I'll just leave that there for a couple of seconds so you can actually read it and we're going to assign it to this shape now as you can see because we've actually selected that on that you see that it is assigned already so it's assigned it uh, in its entirety on this all right going into tab we can actually attach different colors to different things and this is done quite simply for the button if we actually set the l key press the l key it selects all so let's just add in the button color so new texture again so plus i'm going to go to the pre-selected one that i've done for my button and let's just find the button material button mat and then what you can do is just assign it this is all done in edit mode and if you come back out of edit mode now after I've assigned the button texture as you can see the button texture has been attached to it let's have a look at the button yep that looks quite good sharp enough for my liking and what we'll do now is actually go on to the lamp itself so we actually select this I'm just going to grow this selection by pressing ctrl plus 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 because the first color I want to actually put on there is the reflector so plus and a predefined one again we got the golden mirror all right the golden mirror is 0.9 on the reflective it's like a yellowy color or orange if you prefer and the rough roughness is set to zero and we're just going to assign that as well so we assigned another color but we've got no light in our scene yet so the very last thing we need to do is actually assign the actual light to this and this I've done through an emission shader. So I'm just going to grow this selection in there. I mean, exactly the same. What we do is add a new material. And go to the predefined one. Which I've made. Which is my white light. So I'm just going to select the white light. And then assign it again. And as you can see we've now got a bright white light. Assigned in our scene. Now the strength is important on this one, it's an emission shader which is found under this tab. So under the surface you actually select emission and I've set it to 20.9 which is very bright. So come out of there and as you can see we've now got our bright light. But EV doesn't give light the actual attention it deserves and these work better in cycles. So I'm just going to switch the render over to cycles which does a better job of things. So I'm into cycles, experimental, and we'll just go into the rendered space. And as you can see, we've got the actual light affecting the desk, shining there. We've got the shadow from the HDRI, and we've got a bit of, if you put something in front of the light, you'd get a shadow up here. So as you can see, this is looking good, or quite real. It's entirely up to you what HDRI you actually fit on from your scene. So I'm just going to change it just now in the World tab to a different one. And it's still got this pre-selected. I'll change it to the forest one. But as you can see, we've got now trees in, I think, in our scene. And it gives that little bit more reflecting, reflection on your scene. And I think you'll agree that looks quite good. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Our very own flexible reading lamp created entirely in blender we use various tools to craft style and master if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more blender content like this don't forget to su subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload again and if you have any questions or suggestions for a future tutorial leave me a comment down below now it's your turn to dive in, experiment, create your very own amazing design. Until next time, happy blending and remember to share your creations with the world. Bye for now.